Hey everyone. Uh, I just wanted to share this quick video with you talking a little bit more about the Chakra Balancing Kundalini Awakening class series and just give you a little bit more information about what, uh, what chakras are, how they work, how they connect with Kundalini. So really, as we embark on this journey together, it's important that we build this understanding of the energetic flow that we as these divine spiritual beings here have the capacity for. And so the concepts of chakras and kundalini have been around for thousands of years. And although the interpretation and the teachings have kind of morphed and changed over those years, the general understanding has been really preserved. And the life force energy that flows through our human body, it flows along these specific lines of energy called nadis, which are similar to the concept of energy meridians in Chinese medicine, also very similar to our nervous system and all of the different nerves that branch off of our central nervous system. So these nadis, these energy lines, they're like veins of energy that flow through us and in distinct places, these energy lines cross one another. So there are particular line crossings that result in folding and twisting many different lines over. So really becoming these complexes or forming these like kind of knots of energy. These knots, these intermixing complexes of um, these energetic lines that are crossing each other, these are our chakras. And so the energy flows through these channels and these enmesh centers via our, our breath and the life force energy that is flowing within us, our prana. And so this complex pattern, it because it's so kind of like outside of our tangible way of studying, it's never really been completely studied or maybe never will be completely understood. The word chakra um, in Sanskrit means wheel of light and is described as a spinning vortices or a cone or a disc or even cogs that many mystics have seen in visualizations. Now you can't actually see the chakras because they're part of a very subtle energy system, same as your auric field, um, but they're there regardless <laughs> uh, whether we can see them or not much like a lot of things. Each of our chakras has a dominant function or quality and several secondary qualities. And so the various chakra centers are linked with our endocrine system and your nervous system, and therefore also with the glands and the organs, and they supply us with hormones such as adrenaline, insulin, estrogen, and much more. They're also aligned and connected with specific patterns in our life and potentials of thinking, feeling, sensing, and acting. When the flow through a particular chakra or many is closed or is partially blocked or misaligned, it can throw some element of our health, our personality, or our consciousness out of alignment also. Many people believe that we want to embody and focus only on the opening of the chakras to allow for the highest expression of ourselves. And although, of course, that's amazing and that really is truly, you know, part of our ultimate path here, it requires us to not only lean in to those open light expressions, but to also face the shadowed contrasting expression. And so each chakra also has these polarities that exist on a, on a spectrum. It's not a black or white expression, whether um, you know something is turned on in a chakra or off, but there's multiple shades and variants within each chakra that, that shifts and, and modifies as we grow and expand. Now, uh, most of us are familiar with the seven main chakras that are taught in modern day yoga or mystic arts. And there's generally a, con, uh, a consensus, sorry, there's an inconsensus in how many actually exist. But the common theory is that there is around 78,000 chakras in the human body. And remember that these are those intersections of energy flow lines. But there is these seven commonly known major chakras and that's because those are the areas that have the most intersections or the most complexity of a knot. So they say that there are 21 minor chakras, 49 tiny chakras, and the remainder are what they would call nano chakras. So they're just very, very small. The seven main energy wheels, they start at the lower three. So our first, second, and third, our root, our sacral, and our solar plexus, which are associated with our most basic fundamental needs, both physically and emotionally. Sometimes these are called the instinctual chakras, um, but really it is thought that these, these chakras in our lower centers, they are more connected to our human experience here. And the life force is thought, is thought to also vibrate more slowly through these chakras and the energy is more dense. 
Whereas our upper three chakras being our throat, our third eye and our crown, these represent a more rapidly vibrating life force and they correspond to our higher mental, emotional and spiritual aspirations. The heart chakra now is the most complex interconnected center of convergence and it's known as the gateway or the bridge chakra between the lower and the higher chakras. So how does Kundalini play into this? Well, Kundalini is, is as old as the concepts of chakras and have a variety of interpretations in different cultures and traditions. In the yoga tradition, Kundalini is known as the little coiled one and is often depicted as a coiled snake at the base of your spine. And as it awakens, it is the vehicle for spreading prana or our life force energy throughout the body. So awakening our kundalini in combination with opening our chakras and expanding into our highest expression, as well as manifesting that expression in our human reality, is a journey that really takes an individual deep within the truth of who they are, why they're here at this time, where they are out of alignment in their life, and tapping into their inner strength and courage to create the life that is desired. Truly for me, in my opinion, it is the ultimate quest as you unblock and you clear that chakra and those chakra energy centers and your Kundalini flows, really opening you up to this divine spiritual awakening and the untapped potential and capacity and magic of our, of our divine ability to create and manifest everything that we desire in our life. And so our first class was really an introduction to Kundalini, but every week as we continue into the series is going to be focusing in on a particular, um, a particular chakra for that class. And we're going to expand and on the teaching of each individual chakra and learn some different practices and ways that we can uh, complement the movement, as well as the meditation and the mudra and the chanting and the essential oils and the crystals, all of the pieces that are brought into this series to really make it a robust experience for you. And I truly hope that you will join me on this journey of awakening our kundalini and balancing our our chakras system thank you